So uh, let's look into this uh, another question here. Who advocated the following space maintainer? Uh, look at the picture. Okay. So what space maintainer does this look like? It's a distal shoe space maintainer. So distal shoe space maintainer is usually given when there is a premature loss of primary second molar before the eruption of the permanent first molar. Okay. So before eruption of permanent first molar, there's a premature loss to guide the eruption. Okay. A distal shoe space maintainer is given. Now the question says who advocated the following space maintainer. I know it's a distal shoe space maintainer and it was advocated by Willits in the year 1929. So the right answer is option B, Willits. Look into the next uh, MCQ here. The following bag is used for disposal of. Now, when it comes to this, you'll have to recollect the different types of bags used for waste disposal. We have various color codings, right? So here it's talking about the blue color. Okay. And what are the options here? Human anatomical waste. Now, human anatomical waste is disposed in a yellow bag. Second option is microbiology and biotechnology local waste. Now, these bags are usually disposed in red bags. Waste shops. Waste shops are disposed in blue bags and discarded medicines are in black bags. So since I know each option, what it corresponds to is very easy. It's uh, the question is asking about a blue bag. So the right answer is option C. It's waste shops. So uh, look into this next question here. A five-year-old child reported to the clinic with the following condition. What will be the diagnosis? Look into the picture here. Now, usually it's a five-year-old child. And what do you see here? It, there's no tooth there. There's no tooth that's erupted here. here. And uh, over it, you can see a blue dome-shaped swelling. Okay, a blue dome-shaped swelling here. Now, usually in case of, uh, you know, in case of an eruption uh, cyst, uh, when there is tooth about to be erupted, usually the gingiva there is blanched. It's red. You know, there are all these kind of symptoms. But in case where there is cyst, where there is accumulation of blood inside these cysts, it takes a blue dome shaped swelling. Okay, so you need to know this. So since I know that there is a tooth that's present below it, it's not erupted here. And there's a cyst around that unerupted tooth with a blue dome shaped swelling. It's very easy that the answer should be an eruption cyst. Let's look into the options. Cyanosis, pre-eruption cyst, abscess angiogranuloma. So the right answer is option B. It's a pre-eruption cyst. So the next question is a very interesting question. Uh, identify the following autosomal recessive disease. Okay. Now certain questions you just need to see the picture and you'll get the right answer. You don't even have to go and actually look into the other options as well because certain questions are really direct and if you just know the symptoms, signs and symptoms of that particular disease, it's very easy for you to pick the right answer. Look into the first picture here. What do we see? We see that it's all, it's a periodontitis case where there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, infection that I see. There's loss of tooth. There are, there are, you know, drifting of tooth. So here there is premature loss of maybe it's primary permanent tooth. And can you see here there's infection, there's erythema, there's like a periodontitis case here. Okay. Look into the next picture. What do I see here? We see a case of palmoplantar keratoderma, okay, of the palms here. Now, a combination of periodontitis along with palmoplantar keratoderma. What syndrome actually flashes your mind? Yes, that's the right answer. It's Papillon level 3 syndrome. Look into the options. It's option C, papillon Revifri syndrome. So certain answers are there in the question. I mean, almost all answers are there in the question. It's just that you need to really pick out how you want to answer it. So it's just that if you identify the right things here and you know the signs and symptoms of various syndromes, it's very easy to you to, for you to pick the right answer. So uh, let's look into another question here. The space that is seen in the below image is called as 
Now, what space do we see here? We see a space between the lateral incisor and the canine in the maxillary arch. And there is space between the canine and the first premolar in the mandibular arch. Now, what are these spaces? So, we need to know the different kinds of spaces to actually arrive at the right answer. Let's try and solve it in the options. Let's give it an indirect approach of answering. Let's look into the options. Midline space. Midline space is the space present in the midline, right? Between the incisors. So, definitely that's not the right answer. Let's look into option B, leeway space. Now, what is leeway space? Now, leeway space, now usually the, mes the combined mesiodistal width of canine, primary canine and molars, the difference between the combined mesiodistal width of primary canine and molars and its successors is the leeway space okay so this is called leeway space what about option c primate space now primate space are actually spaces they're also called as simian spaces now primate space also called as simian or anthropoid spaces now these are spaces present between canine and canine and molar in the lower arch and lateral incisor and canine in the upper arch now these are called as primate spaces now these spaces are utilized in the early mesial shift now what is early mesial shift when there are permanent molars erupting that force closes these spaces. So these spaces are utilized during that eruption of the permanent first molar. So these are called as primate spaces. Uh, look at option D, incisal liability. Now incisal liability, uh, to understand this, you need to know that the primary incisors, they're obviously small, right? Whereas the permanent incisors are larger. So the space that is required to accommodate the permanent incisors compared to the space present that difference is the incisal liability okay now looking after knowing the different meanings of different words here it's very easy for you to arrive at the right answer that's called primate space this, this is a space that's present between the lateral incisor and the canine and the maxillary arch and the lower premolar and the first molar in the lower arch uh, look into this next question here the following appliance is indicated in which habit look at the uh, image here what does it show it it is a west it's an oral screen here that's present okay which has a hearts modification what's a hearts modification it has a ring here okay and it's an oral screen so oral screen was first introduced by neville in 1912 okay it was used to it's a habit breaker for what it's used for mouth breathing cases. Look into the options. Lip biting, tongue thrusting, mouth breathing, masochistic habits. So the op right answer is option C, mouth breathing. So basically an oral screen would be used for mouth breathing. And uh, this hearts modification that you have, that's to do the lip exercises for hypotonic lips. Also, there's another modification where there are holes present in the um, vestibular screen and gradually as the patient gets accustomed, the, the holes are closed so that, you know, we can break the habit of mouth breathing. Also, it can have an extra vestibular screen, a tongue screen here that is for uh, patients who are uh, who have a habit of tongue thrusting. So there are various modifications, but oral screen is used for mouth breathing patients. Look into another case-related question here. A male patient reported to the clinic with a complaint of gingival bleeding on slight pressure and repeated dislocation of jaw. Diagnose the condition with the help of the below clinical finding. Now, the clinical finding in the picture here, it shows that hyperextensibility of joints. I mean, the patient is almost able to, you know, uh, 
extend its his thumb almost you know he's able to bend his thumb that's of a great degree a great hyper extensibility that i can see here but what are the different key points that the question gives me the patient is complaining of gingival bleeding with slight pressure and is repeated dislocation of jaw so hyper extensibility of joints of skin and gingival bleeding now all of this what does it kind of remind you let's look into the options puri robin syndrome ehler dahler syndrome my facial pain dysfunction syndrome and apert syndrome now in ehler dahler syndrome there is fragility of the blood vessels so there's very easy bruising also there is hyper extensibility of skin and joints that's why it's called as the rubbery man yeah and uh, looking into the options there is gingival bleeding on slight pressure repeated dislocation of jaw and seeing this clinical finding the right answer is option b ehler dahler syndrome uh, a little info here option d apert syndrome here there is syndactyly of fingers so basically it's going to look like this it's going to be like mitten hands okay so uh we'll again discuss another mcq here identify the following flap design so look at the flap design look at the options the options are semi lunar flap envelope flap two sided triangular flap and three sided rhomboid flap to know this i need to know how each type of flap looks like correct so when we come to semi lunar flap like for example that's the tooth okay semi lunar flap is going to be like this it can be done for various there are various indications for semi lunar flap next is an envelope flap now that's the tooth okay a semi uh, an envelope flap the incision is given here at the gingival margin okay and the tissue is raised so that is a envelope flap let's look how a two sided triangular flap looks like now that's the tooth the only difference here would be is to an envelope flap there's a vertical releasing incision given here okay so it's going to look like this this is a two sided triangular flap coming to a three sided rhomboid flap that's the tooth So it's going to be extended on both the sides. Okay, that's how the flap would look like, and that would be a three-sided rhomboid flap. Since we know how each flap design looks like, simple, right? To pick out, so this is an envelope flap. That's option B, envelope flap. so another instrument related question so usually uh, there are a lot of instrument related questions so uh, have a habit of you know kind of revising all the instruments be it conservative be it endo be it uh, perio be it oral surgery a lot of instruments and a lot of subjects right so whenever you read have a habit to simultaneously look into the picture and see how it looks because you never know now any pick any question can 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 be asked okay so look into this option and see identify the following instrument now what does this instrument look like and the options are hemostat alice tissue forcep babcox tissue forcep and tongue forcep again you need to know how each forcep looks like to actually identify the instrument Let's look in how hemostat looks like. Just give you a rough presentation. Now that's how a hemostat looks like. Okay, coming to Ali's tissue forcep. Now that looks like this. that's an alice tissue forcep coming to babcox tissue forceps and that is going to look like now alice tissue forceps has small blades here whereas babcox does not have blades used for much delicate uh, structures okay 
that's how back box to forceps looks and the next last option is tongue forceps how does a tongue forceps look like since i know how each forceps looks like it's very easy to actually get to the right answer look at the forceps here this is an alleys tissue forceps that is option b another instrument uh, question identify the following diagnostic probe so you need to know all your probes okay so university of north carolina how is the graduations whenever it comes to probe you have to think of graduations because you will identify that only through graduations okay look at this how it is it's going to it's having your graduations right so what is option a option a is university of north carolina how does that look now university of north carolina has if this is the probe okay now it has 15 mm markings okay but there are markings color coded at 5 10 and 15 so this is north carolina which has a 15 mm markings with color coding at 5 10 and 15 coming to michigan o probe with williams markings ah uh, michigan probe this is michigan o pro now this has markings you need to know it has markings at 1 2 3 5 7 8 9 10 10 then let's look at uh, who probe that's option c how does who probe look like now who probe it has a ball in the end here okay and it has markings at it has markings at 3.5 8.5 and 11.5 and it has a color coding from from 3.5 to 3.5 to 5.5 there is a color coding here so that's how a who probe looks like what is the last option here mark is color coded probe now how does mark mark is color coded probe look like now this has graduations at every 3 mm so that's how the mark is color coded probe looks like now since i know how each probe looks like i know its graduation i know the markings look into the ans look into the option here look at the figure here it has segmental 3 mm marking so the option is answer is option d mark is color coded probe uh let's look into another mcq here chlorhexidine is used as a local drug delivery in the below figure identify the product now you need to know what product contributes to what kind of an antimicrobial agent here so it's very easy straightforward question arestin is minocycline fibers Actinide is tetracycline hydrochloride. Periodchip is chlorhexidine. Atridox is doxycycline. Very easy. When it comes to chlorhexidine, what is the product? It is periodchip. So this option C is the right answer. let's look at this question now the amber line in the below image provides information about amber line oh uh, where does it come open ref, you know revise in okay it comes under impaction word lines right white line amber line and red line correct what does each line contribute to you need to know all of this to actually answer the right answer correct now look at this this white line here present that's white line okay now this what information is this going to give about the inclination of the tooth okay how the tooth is the occlusal planes of the tooth it's drawn at the occlusal plane next amber line is this line this is going to tell me the level of the bone okay that's present 
how much bone is present, how much bone is covering the impacted tooth. Uh, coming to red line, you can see here that's the red line. Now this is going to tell me the depth of the tooth. How much? What is the depth of the tooth? How much of bone is covered? You know, over that tooth here, and it's also going to be. It's an imaginary line drawn perpendicular to the amber line. Also going to tell me about the point of application of the elevator here. Okay, since you know what each line is for, it's very easy now to look at the right answer. Let's look into the options. Inclination of the tooth. This is denoted by the white line. Bone level. Yes, that is the amber line. Point of application is the red line. Depth of tooth in bone is again the red line. So, what is the question? The amber line in the below image provides information about it's the bone level. So, option B is the right answer. Uh, look at this radiographic question here. The radiolucency is the in the below radiograph is suggestive of. Uh, look at this. The radiolucency is present below the central incisors. So, uh, we'll have to like kind of revise. In our brains, okay, what are the different kind of uh, conditions where there's radiolucency present between the central incisors? Let's look into the options. We'll arrive at the right answer. Not to worry. It's clestat cyst. Clestat cyst is a nasopalatine or nasoalveolar cyst, and it is a soft tissue cyst which is not seen in a radiograph. Correct. So we can eliminate this option. Option B is a nasopalatine cyst. Nasopalatine cyst is present between two central incisors and it is ovoid in shape. The radiolucency is present between the central incisors. Uh, option C is globulomaxillary cyst. Now, this cyst is present between the lateral incisor and the canine. Okay, it's an inverted pear shaped uh, radiolucency seen, or most commonly called as premaxillary maxillary cyst. And uh, option D is nasoalveolar cyst, which is another name of clestat cyst. Again, eliminated, globulo eliminated. So the right answer is a nasopalatine cyst, which is present between the central incisors and it is ovoid in shape. So option B is the right answer. We we'll look into another case related question. A patient reported to the clinic with a burning sensation in the mouth diagnosed the condition. What do what keywords do we have? We have it's a burning sensation in the mouth. Look into the image. These are very direct related uh, questions. You know, you just look into the image, you get the answer. What do we see here? We see radiating lacy white lines, right? In which condition do we see that? Look into the options: leukoplakia, psoriasis, OSMF, lichen planus. In leukoplakia, we see white thick patches, right? We don't see these kind of white lacy lines. Psoriasis mostly would be like peeling of the gums there. Very a lot of erythema around that area. OSMF we would see bands, those you know keratotic bands that present there. Lichen planus. Lichen planus has these kind of white lacy papules that are present here, which are most commonly called as Wickham's striae. So the right answer is option D, lichen planus. So let's look into the other image. The yellowish white lesions seen in the below image is due to. Very simple, right? What is this? It is for dicey spots or granules. What are they? They are ectopic collection of sebaceous glands. Very easy. Look into the options. Minus salivary glands, candida albicans, lipid globules, sebaceous glands. It's Ectopic collections of sebaceous glands. So option D is the right answer. Uh, let's look into this uh, another instrument related question. Identify the following instrument. Now look at the instrument. It is, uh, what does it look like? So here I'm trying to tell you a, a student can get confused, right? You need to actually brush up and see how each instrument looks like. You need to, you know, just don't look into the picture. Of course, being a dental student, you have all these instruments in your kit. Just take it out. See how each instrument looks like. See how the blade looks like. See how the orientation of the blade is to the shank and the handle. You know, have a kind of a, an approach where you see and learn rather than read and learn, right? Have that kind of an approach is going to take you a long way. So look into the options is hatchet, hoe, chisel, angle former. I need to know how each instrument looks to actually arrive at the right answer. So let's look at how a hatchet looks like. 
okay a hatchet now a hatchet is a type of chisel okay and here the blade is parallel to the handle of the long axis of the handle of the instrument that is how a hatchet looks like how does a hole look like now that's how a hole looks like and here the blade is perpendicular to the long axis of the handle coming to a chisel a chisel is going to be like this here again the blade is perpendicular to the long axis coming to angle former that's how an angle former is here the blade is apart from 90 degrees uh, apart from 90 degrees that is the orientation of the blade to the angle now looking looking into all of the different kinds of instruments here what does this image closely resemble it resembles a chisel so the option the right answer is option c it's a chisel so uh, let's look into another question here the following image belongs to which class of kennedy's classification so kennedy has four classifications the remaining are applegate's modification so let's concentrate on kennedy's classification class 1 class 2 class 3 class 4 what does each classification tell us so class 1 classification is now for example that is the arch and there are two here okay now class 1 is where there is one or multiple loss of tooth spaces edentulous spaces present okay but they are present posterior to the they are bilateral present in a single arch and present posterior to the tooth so that is class 1 so the edentulous place uh, spaces are posterior to the natural teeth coming to class 2 is for example this is the arch okay and that's the tooth this is a single unilateral edentulous space okay and there is and it's present posterior to the natural teeth so there is no teeth present here that's the so it's present posterior to natural teeth this is a class 2 kennedy's classification coming to class 3 this is for example that's the arch that's the tooth now here the edentulous space is present and it is having natural teeth anterior and posterior to it that is class 3 coming to class 4 it is a single unilateral space but here it crosses the midline it's the bilateral space here and here the natural teeth are present posterior to the edentulous space so look into the figure here what is it there are natural teeth present posterior to the edentulous space present here that is a class 4 kennedy's classification so the op answer is option d class 4 kennedy's classification so today's entire discussion was just to focus and just to make you understand on how to actually answer image based questions as i told you a very uh, scoring kind of an mcq this is even though the quantity of que questions might be less but the way to answer it is very important so do not rush take your time do a preparation as in to incorporate a lot of image based related questions whenever you're revising anything look how how the image looks like whenever you're reading about any condition any syndrome any disease please look into how the textbook shows the images of various syndromes various conditions various uh, diseases so that will give you a better idea a better hand a better grasp over your topic knowledge so i think there are no shortcuts to success right you really just can't uh, you know just read whatever you want to and just go give an exam right whenever you want to think of success it is al always you know repeated revisions it's small attempts made day in and day out and only then a lot of perseverance always takes you a long way so take it slow but take it in a smart way and hard work always is mandatory so i think if you have the right 
approach and a right spirit you can definitely get your dream seat in your dream college and i would wish you all the best for your exams and all the best